In this video, we're going to show you the overview of the Asiga Composer software. So to begin, I'm going to first open up the Asiga Composer software. As soon as we open the software itself, we have three options right off the bat. We have new build, open build, and then recent build. Open build is to open a previously saved build, and recent is accessing recently opened save builds. 99% uh, of the time, you're going to be selecting new build. Uh, from here, under new build, you have the ability to select your target printer and choose your material that you want to print with. So, for example, Vare Model OS Ivory 20.1, and then you can choose the layer thickness you want to print in. So, uh, for the layer thicknesses, if you choose 50 microns, that is, seems to be optimal accuracy for just about any indication. If you go less than that, you will get a little bit of a smoother surface, but it's going to take significantly longer to print. Uh, if you are not so concerned with the surface quality, you can print in 75 or 100 micron layers or greater, and it's going to print significantly faster. I'm going to choose 50 micron layers, and then select OK. So inside of the uh, Sega Composer software, to manipulate the screen, if you right click and hold, you can rotate. If you left click and hold, you can pan the screen. And if you scroll in and out with your mouse wheel, you can zoom in and out. Also across the top, there are these easy viewfinders. So if you start to get lost on the screen, you can select the first option, which is a isometric view, left and right. We have a top point of view next to it, so if I select that, it's the top view. And then if I select it again, it's going to toggle to the bottom point of view. Same for the front. If I select again, it's going to toggle to the back. And then we have a left view, and then if we select it again, it's going to toggle to the right. We have a printer point of view, so this is how it's going to look hanging on the printer. And then we have a perspective mode, so it kind of warps the screen, makes it look like as if you were actually looking at the actual object itself. It gives it more of a three-dimensional render. Beyond that, we have some manual zoom in, manual zoom out, and zoom to all. Across the top, on this progress bar here, we have new build. If I select new build, you can actually create multiple windows open or tabs, so I'm going to select OK. So now we can see we have two different builds running at the same time. We have add parts. This is how we actually import in our STL files to print. We have open build and we have save build. So we can save a build and then open it in this window. We have a nesting function or autoplay so you can auto nest the structures. If we select on it, we can see the options. If we just simply select apply, it will automatically try to nest the structures on the build plate. We have generate supports, so we can actually support our structures. We can create a multi-stack. We have the ability to change our build properties at any time. So let's say if I wanted to change it from ivory to, for example, let's say gray, I can do so. I have a build time estimator, which is really cool. Not only does it give an actual time to print, you can also program a uh, uh, cost estimator as well. So you can put the cost of the resin per liter here and it will give us an output of how much it costs to print the objects on the build plate. We have our build wizard, so this is how we'll actually send a print job to the printer. We'll see that momentarily. We have the open printer web interface. If we select that, this is actually going to link directly to the printer that we are working with. We can see that we have a build queue that we can view. We can access and control the front panel. We can see it's printing currently. We have access to the actual uh, factory calibration for the X, Y, and Z axes. Under system information, we can view the object of the printer that we're uh, working with. We can also view the, uh, the serial number, uh, the firmware version, uh, the name of the printer, and so on and so forth. And we can also update the firmware from this panel as well if we download the latest firmware from the Asika website. 
From here we also have a undo button, a redo button, a delete option if we had the object selected or imported in. We can clone the objects. We can create an array. We can rectangularly select them. So for example, it grays out the screen and then you can left click and drag. We can measure between two points. And then here's our views that we saw earlier. Also on the left hand side, when we have an object imported in, we can view the X, Y, and Z dimensions of the structures. And we have some controlled movement functions where we're changing it in the X, Y, and Z direction. If we're manually moving it by whatever amount. And also we can rotate it from the X, Y, and Z from whatever degree we place in. And the big no-no in dentistry is you can scale the objects as well. Uh, anything that you're creating from your CAD software, you do not want to scale because it is at the perfect scale already. However, let's say if you downloaded a object from a website like thingiverse.com, you can actually scale the object so they fit on the build plate. More or less if you're printing like tools or trinkets or toys or whatever it may be. And that concludes the session for the overview of the Asika Composer software. It is pretty straightforward to use. In the next video, we're going to cover how to actually import an object and nest it and actually send it to the printer. Uh, so that'll be exciting to see.